Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio, and today we're back with what is probably going to be the last big update from Scarlet and Violet. There was one piece of news I was waiting for, and they didn't show it off. We had to wait until the pre-releases happened. But the pre-releases have now happened, and with the pre-releases, we now know what's going on with the gold cards. And if we use Maridon as an example here, because I don't know why would we not, we can see triple gold star. Oh, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. And to be fair, this is what I predicted the other day, though I had little basis for it. Except for it's kind of the only thing that made sense. And I like this. Because, of course, this really sets the gold cards apart. The gold cards are the biggest, rarest cards in the set. They are the ones with the lowest pull rate, etc. And one of the things I've mentioned, and I've talked about this before. In the Sword and Shield era, it was a little bit sad, I think it's fair to say, that... It was hard to tell the different rarities apart. Like, let's go to the last main set, shall we? For the Sword and Shield era, that's what I'm looking for. Let's go to Silver Tempest. That was the last main set. So we start off nice and easy. We've got our commons, which are circle rares. And then we've got our uncommons, which are those little diamonds. And then we've got the stars, which are rare. This all makes perfect sense to me. I get this. This is lovely. And we saw that the hollows were still black stars, but that was fine. That wasn't a big deal. The problem is we get above that and it all gets very confusing. So we look at a Pokemon V, something like Regidrago. What's a rarity? One silver star. We look at Regidrago V star. What's a rarity? One silver star. We look at full art Regidrago. Uh, rarity is a silver star. We look at Special Art Rare Regidrago. The rarity is one silver star. Um, we look at Rainbow Rare Regidrago V-Star. The rarity is one silver star. And then, yeah. I haven't said about a supporter yet, have I? Serena, one silver star. And then even when we get up to gold cars, like the lovely Gapejaw Bog, again, we're looking at one silver star. So we got all these different cars, which are blatantly different rarities and yet they all sit there under the same rarity and frankly ladies and gentlemen that's not very fair and i'm not a huge fan of it it just gets awkward and they fixed that with scarlet and violet and i couldn't be happier and now we got the final piece of the puzzle which is these gold cars that have the three gold stars and that's really basically saying, hey, look, you've pulled the best one. And I'm sorry, but when I think about this, I think about myself when I was a kid buying Pokemon cards. I try to imagine what kids are going to be like nowadays pulling Pokemon cards. And it's not about the value. It's not about reselling it or any of that garbage. It is, oh my goodness, I pulled a card with three gold stars on. And I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you that all around the world, there are going to be kids pulling these gold cards, realizing they've got three gold stars and being super excited because three gold stars must mean something good. And I love that we get that because... I mean, I just showed you examples of essentially seven different types of cards, all of which were just single silver star rarity, and that's just awkward. Nowadays, they've gone and fixed it, and it's absolutely beautiful. Which gold cards are available in Scarlet and Violet? Well, we've got the aforementioned Maridon, and to be fair, right, Maridon, great. Proper job great really really good really good card that is the one whereby you've got an ability that lets you search your deck for two lightning pokemon and bench them which is obviously amazing the attack's fine free energy 220 it, it's fine it's not great i'm not arguing that it's great but it is fine it is okay it will do frankly ladies and gentlemen it will do so okay we like this this is good uh, now, sticking with Violet, so we might as well kind of go Scarlet and Violet as they were over in Japan. We also have Rare Candy, and there will be a little bit of a theme here. There were two sets over in Japan, Scarlet EX and Violet EX. And what you essentially see is 
One Pokemon, one trainer card, one energy. So Rare Candy is a gold version here. And it's Rare Candy, right? Who doesn't love a bit of the old Rare Candy? I do. Putting that out there. I think Rare Candy's rather spiffing. Now, it is worth pointing out that we did get a gold Rare Candy in Plasma Blast. And we did get a gold Rare Candy in Guardians Rising. So, we have seen gold Rare Candy before. Here's just a third way to get it. Is it better than the other two? I don't really know or care, honestly. But, you know, make your choice and live with it. And then there is a gold lightning energy. And the gold lightning energy, and again, we've seen gold energy in the past, all right? But the, why is it gold lightning energy? That one's easy. Maridon. Maridon, the card is a lightning type Pokemon. Ergo, we get a gold lightning energy to go along with it. That makes perfect sense. That is exactly the kind of thing we should be expecting. Life is good. Moving over into the cards we got from Scarlet, and we're going to see similar kind of things. We've got Coridon EX as a gold card. Once again, it's not a great card. It's fine. Like 223 energy, yes, but it's harder to get the energy on. And it's got the rather ridiculous ability Dino Cry. Once during your turn, you may attach up to two basic fighting energy from your discard to your basic fighting Pokemon in any way you like. But it ends your turn. And you're attaching from the discard. So there's a very good chance that what essentially happens is on turn one, you can't get the energy in the discard. So you don't want to use the ability. And then by the time we get to turn two, you're not willing to end your turn anymore. And then we never actually get this. And that's a um that's a little bit of a problem. So yeah. Not, not necessarily loving that, if I'm honest. It is, I, I think it's pretty clear, and the results over in Japan are showing this as well, that Maridon is the better of the two, and I don't think that's a controversial statement. So, after that, we got ourselves a gold version of Nest Ball, and we like Nest Ball. Of course, with Quick Ball rotating out, Nest Ball is going to become a lot more important. It lets you search for a basic Pokemon and put it onto your bench. Coming into play abilities, obviously, there will not activate, and that is pretty important. So, yeah. It's still good, though, and it's going to see a huge amount of play. And now there's a gold version of it. Of course, there was a gold version of it in Sun and Moon Base. So, again, you, you don't have to necessarily go for this one. You absolutely can just kind of ignore it and use the one we've had for a while. That's absolutely fine. But if you want this new lovely goldy version of it, I've got wonderful news for you, ladies and gentlemen. It's here, and it's kind of lovely. So, yay! And then, of course, we've got gold fighting energy, which you should kind of be expecting, because in the same way we've got lightning energy because of Maridon, we get fighting energy here because of Coridon. That shouldn't be a particularly controversial or annoying statement, honestly. That should work just fine. So, yeah, there are six gold cards, and they're looking pretty good. So let's finish off with a nice little roundup then of exactly what the rarities look like, because this does get a little bit awkward. So leaving aside the rares and below, because we've kind of talked about them, Magnazone, we've got Magnazone EX, that's a nice example of an EX. You will notice a double black star rarity. It's got the same color star as an ordinary rare, but now there's two of them, and that kind of shows them to be a little bit fancier. If we look at a full art EX, and you know I've got to show Spydops here because that was, of course, my official reveal, you'll notice that there is a double silver star rarity. So it's got the same number of stars, and it looks kind of the same in terms of size and placement and all of that as your EX, but with one major difference. Oh, maybe they are actually a little bit bigger. But anyway, one major difference here is that they're silver, not black. And we've all been kind of led to believe gold, silver, bronze, and all of that. So that is going to look a little bit fancier. Plus, full arts just look fancier than regular EXs anyway. And jobs are good, and ladies and gentlemen, jobs are good. And, and if you're thinking, hang on a second, Wossy, what about single silver star rarity? Yeah, we, we've now seen the set as a whole at pre-releases, and um, it doesn't exist. I'll be honest with you, it's not there. It's not a thing. It doesn't exist. I'm sorry. Hey ho. We can then look at artwork rares, those art rares as, uh, of, well, illustration rares in English, art rares over in Japan. 
And you know at this stage, I'm going to go Mavastiff here because that's your Okacheke card and it's absolutely stunning. You will notice single gold star. So these kind of start feeling special because you've got gold stars. And this is lovely. It clearly shows it apart from things like a regular rare, for instance. Although, like I've said, there's no single silver star, but hey-ho. If we have a look at your special illustration rares, and let's go Maraid on here because we talked about that a, a little bit, why not? You'll notice we've got double gold star, and that is showing us that these special illustration rares are better than, they're separate from the regular illustration rares. That's kind of lovely. And then you move up to the gold cards, which are treble gold star, and this all just makes perfect sense. I've been saying good things about this for a while, but I do think it bears repeating one more time. I love that Pokemon are doing this. I think this is a wonderful idea. And for people like me and a bunch of you watching, it doesn't really matter. We know what all the rarities are. But I guarantee you for a whole bunch of kids out there, the new way of doing rarities is going to make a huge difference. And it's going to really let them know quite easily, you know, what, what kind of cards they've got. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty gosh darned awesome. Right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to know. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about the rarities. Tell me if you're in favour. Tell me what you pulled at your pre-release. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord and chat with us. Doesn't have to be about Pokemon. It can be about anything. But by far, oh, and, and, get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Wafflos, who's been a supporter of ours for a little while now and seems to be a very lovely person. So thank you very much for all the support and for being a very lovely person. But by far, the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.